In today's tutorial, let's learn how to take it from the top. Pull over. This is for six months all the way to 24 months, and that's going to come up right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today's tutorial is Take It From The Top Pullover and this is all the way from 6 months to 24 months in size and we're going to be covering this pattern from start to finish. I'm going to show you the secrets on being able to read this pattern because all of the sizes are available here. So just because just because you see a lot of writing doesn't mean that it's really that hard to do. Done lots of baby sweaters in the past and this is no different. In today's tutorial we're going to be reviewing these instructions and it's all the way from 6 months to 24 months and it's available on these two pages that we have here. Now the yarn is calling for Bernat Baby Sport and a 4 millimeter size G crochet hook today but I'm going to be substituting for Karen Simply Soft still using a size G and we are decided to make it more boy oriented for our version here on camera. Before we begin let's review this pattern and just kind of just decipher it a little bit and show you what you need to do. So this is all the abbreviations here that is listed throughout the pattern and you can see how to do the stitches. So if you're not sure it explains those and basically those are used inside of the instructions. So whenever you see abbreviations you can refer to the key over here in order to do it. Now the materials uh, that it's asking for are right here and you can see that it's one ball of each when you're doing any of the sizes in the baby uh, baby sport here but I am substituting so just be mindful that you just need if you're substituting that you just have to watch your yarn quantities. Um, what we have here is that we have the instructions. The instructions are written for the smallest size and then it jumps up to bigger sizes. So what we have here do you see how that 6 months is in red, orange is 12 months, green is 18 and 24 months is in blue. So when we go to read the instructions we have to be mindful of where we are. A strong suggestion for you get a highlighter and just highlight the number that you need. So we're going to be doing the 6 months on camera here but you can just substitute the information I'm going to show you and just do the different sizes that are available. So if you were doing for example maybe the 18 month sizes what would you follow? So you do main color which is MC chain and then you'll jump over to 56 because that's the green one that you want to do. And every time there's instructions there's going to be 3 digits in the brackets plus the fourth one that's outside. So it's it's 6 months, 12, 18 and 24 and it's represented by the color. So you just have to follow the instructions and every time that there is a decision of the sizing you'll notice that is in brackets and it's pretty easy to follow once you have that concept in mind. When working on today's project we're going to be starting at the neckline and working our way down. You will notice that there's buttons here. Those are uh, real buttons. So we need to be mindful so the project doesn't go in a complete circle all the way around the baby. So we're going to continue to stop and then go back and forth and we're going to do that for quite some time before we get to the base here. You will need a tape measure because at a certain point we're going to have to measure all the way down in order to get to the right sizes that we need for this particular project. And finally before we begin we're going to be doing the body area here. It's known as the bodice. Okay and then they're going to do the sleeves. Now the sleeves are you'll notice that there's really no sewing because when we come back we're going to um, put the sleeves on and we're going to be crocheting around the holes that are made and then work our way down the sleeve. So it's a very easy pattern to be able to follow. We've kind of done this. This whole beautiful uh, stitch work I've never seen before so we're going to have to tackle that as we go. And so without further ado let's uh, get on to our pattern. It's a 4 millimeter size G crochet hook today and let's grab our yarn and let's start right from the very beginning. And just before we begin remember that I will be doing the size 6 months. So I'll be doing everything in the red that you see and that if you're doing a bigger size all you just have to do is just refer to this. So if I say you're going to chain 50 if you want to do the bigger sizes just substitute the different numbers that you have and you'll have to do that each and every time throughout the instructions. So just be uh, aware of that it's not a big deal. So instead of chaining 50 if you wanted to do the 24 month you'll chain 58. It's just when you come up here you'll have to just change it. So yeah. Uh, one half double crochet in the third chain from the hook, one half double crochet in the next eight if you're doing my size but if you're doing again the 24 month you'll do one half double crochet in the next 10. Again I would really highlight the numbers that you want and therefore you won't screw up and you won't have uh, your sweater not balancing. Okay so let's begin right now. Okay so let's begin and create a slip knot. I'm gonna keep a generous tail here so I can use a darning needle to hide that in afterward especially if a child is wearing it. 
create your slip knot. And now let's begin and I'm going to chain 50 for my size. Remember to change this information if you're doing any of the other sizes. So again just chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Go all the way to the one that you want. I'm going to go to 50 and meet me back here in just a moment. Okay, I have my chain 50 and it says in the instructions one half double crochet, third chain from the hook and then one half double crochet in each of the next eight. So let's go to the first part. So one half double crochet in the third chain. So we're gonna just count back one, two and three and let's do a half double crochet there. And remember what it said. It said one half double crochet in each of the next eight. So we're gonna do another eight. So half double crochet, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so now we have to stop and what does it say next? It says three half double crochets in the next chain and um, PM on the center half double crochet. What does PM mean? I have to look at the instructions. PM means to place marker. So we have to place a marker at that point. So let's grab our marker as well. So let's uh, do that first. So I'll be right back. Let me grab a marker. Okay, so I found myself a marker. All it is is spare yarn, just uh, trimmed. And all I'm just gonna do now is start. So it says three half double crochets in the next chain and place marker on the center one. So let's begin. So the next one is gonna have three. So we're gonna do one and two and three. And it's said to place a place marker in the middle one. So let's uh, do that. So all I'm just gonna do for this is just pull it out, okay, and go into the second one, which is the middle one, and just grab my stitch marker and pull a portion of that through. So there is my stitch marker in place, and now it's ready to move on to the next part of the instruction. Okay, so the stitch marker is in. Let's can carry on. So you'll notice in the instructions that it will say one half double crochet in each of the next six chains. You'll notice that there's no brackets, there's no colored writing. That is six for everybody across the board. So the next six um, stitches will be a half double crochet for everybody. So we've got one, two, three, four, five and six is your last one. So let's carry on. So the next one is going to be another turning point. So there's gonna be three half double crochets into the next one and the middle one we're gonna place another stitch marker. So put three into this stitch and if you're curious, let me uh, put in that stitch marker while I'm talking to you. So put a stitch marker in the middle one of those three. So just another stitch marker that you may have. And what this is, is that this six um, half double crochets that you just put in, if you look at the baby's top, this is the, um, this is the actual top of the shoulders. Okay, so middle one of the three. Let me try again. There we go, got it. Okay, so there is my three. So let's carry on. We're gonna do the back part. So we're moving to the back of the baby. And this one here for our size that we're gonna be doing is that we're going to be doing 14. So there's different sizes for the rest of them. So the next 14 um, stitch our chains will be one half double crochet each. So we got one, two, we got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oops, nine, it's ten, 
11, 12, 13, and 14. So this is the whole baby's back right here. This is the 14th. Okay, so this is the whole baby's back. So you got the shoulders here, this bend here, and then the first one is the front of this baby sweater. So let's begin. The next one then is three half double crochets. Again, we're gonna do another bend and we're gonna place a stitch marker in the middle one of the, that three as well. Okay, so that I got my three half double crochets in there. Let's put another stitch marker in. Just helps you see it better. By the way, um, you don't necessarily have to do the, have to do this, but it just is easier to see. So why wouldn't you bother, right? So let's carry on. So the next uh, one is gonna be six half double crochets in a row. That's for everybody's sizes. Okay, so this is over the shoulder on the other side. So that was one and this is two. Three. Four. Five and six is in. Okay, and let's put another bend. So we're gonna put three half double crochets in in the next one. One, two, and three. And the middle one of the three is going to get us another stitch marker again. Okay, so let's pull it up. Okay, so the middle one is another stitch marker just to show you where it is. Now if you've done your math right, the remaining stitches, in this case for the six month size, there's gonna be nine stitches left. Everybody else will have different uh, sizes that are left that are in. So what I would normally do is just crochet the rem re remainder anyway. So let's uh, do it anyway. So it's last nine. I'll count it and see if I'm right. So I have one, two, three, three, four, it's five, six, seven, I think I got the right amount of stitches. That was seven. I just gotta redo that one. Seven, and eight and I have one more after that. So that does take me to nine. So the very first uh, row that we've just done is so important because it establishes um, everything basically on this pattern. Okay, so I just finished with nine and this is what it looks like at this point. So let me take out the hook. And so you have the main back right here, okay? And then you have the shoulders, okay? Right where my finger and my thumbs rest and then this front part on both sides is the front of the sweater. So let's turn our work and move up to row number two. So we're gonna start row number two. Now row number two is very, very easy and the rest of them are easier on the front part of this. So it says in the next part of the instructions that we're gonna repeat this row seven more times after we get this done. So once you understand this row, the remainder is done. So um, if you have the larger sizes, you're going to repeat a different not amount of times and just refer to the pattern for that. So we're gonna start off by chaining two, one and two and we're going to half double crochet in each of the half double crochets until the marked um, stitch that you have and then in those stitches you're going to put um, three half double crochets and then you're gonna keep moving along. So every time you hit a stitch marker you're gonna add three. Move up your stitch marker every, each and every time. So let's begin. We're gonna just half double crochet into each one of the half double crochets that you run into until you get to the stitch marker. I'll just show you one of the stitch markers on getting there and then you can uh, do it for the remainder of your row. It's really that easy. I like baby sweaters that are designed this way. It just is a, it's very easy to follow and they shape perfectly too. So just one half double into each. So you notice I'm not even counting. I don't need to. I'm just looking for the stitch marker. So you can see it's marked right there. So this is the one I'm gonna put three half double crochets. Let me wrap that first. So I'm gonna put three into that one and then I'm gonna move the stitch marker up to the middle one of that three. 
This is darker yarn so it's probably better to move a stitch marker but you can almost get away with not having to do it. Come to the middle one of that three, just grab that stitch marker and pull it through and just keep it in your work and then continue to move along. So every time you hit a stitch marker, add three half double crochets and then move the stitch marker up and do that all the way around. So continue that and I'll see you back here after this row and then we'll just quickly review and then I'm gonna leave the front part of this for you to finish off and then we're gonna start with the divide of the body and that's really kind of fun because you'll notice it will go so much faster once you get to that point. Okay, this is what it looks like at the end of row number two. Okay, so it's just a thicker version. So I'm going to repeat row number two seven more times for my size. If you have other sizes, you'll just have to repeat them. Look at the instructions for that and I'm gonna meet you back. So the divide for the next body, what's gonna happen here right over the shoulders, it's going to come down and collapse over top and the armhole is right here. Okay, do you see that? So this middle one is gonna fold like this and this is where the arm's gonna come out. So we need to grow this bigger so that the baby can get their arm out and once you do that then what's gonna happen is that you're gonna crochet along the base of here, totally miss this section here and then it gets much faster than doing the bottom of the sweater. So carry on and continue the repeat pattern and I'll meet you back here where we're ready to do the divide. So just completely do this row over and over and over for the prescribed time in the pattern and then I'll see you back here and we'll do the divide together. So I'm now ready to move along to the divide and so when I last left you it was row number two and I told you to keep going and you got bigger and bigger and this is what it looks like. So what you're looking at here, the back one is right where my fingers are kinda moving right back here. Where I'm holding is the arm sleeves, the top of the shoulders and then the, these two are the front panels that the, the baby is wearing. So I have not moved up my stitch marker like you, I have showed you to do. That's because I'm pretty good at crochet. I've been doing it since I was a kid so I can identify where my corners are but I would recommend putting in your stitch markers if you've done the same way I just did it by leaving them out. It just makes it easier to be able to identify the next part. So the next part I'm going to have you, um, you can either count the stitches or I can give you some tips on what you need to do. So let's put Okay, so when we go to do the next part, we're going to do the fold of the shoulders. So we're gonna be able to crochet along the first part here and then we're going to fold it but before, when we fold it, we're going to be folding it so that the other stitch marker aligns with it but we have to make sure we put a chain five in between, crochet along the back and then fold the next one and make sure that when you go to fold it there's a chain five also in there and that's gonna make a difference. I realize in the next part of this uh, tutorial that we're going to have the seam underneath one of the sleeves just like so. So when you go to begin we're going to chain up five or two and then we're going to half double crochet and I'll show you how to do the first one and then I'll leave you to do the second. So we're just gonna uh, half double crochet ourselves to the first place marker There, um, people always email when they um, do these, when we do these kind of sweaters, they think that this kind of concept can be done for an adult and unfortunately because of the way that the adult shapes as we get older, um, this concept is not possible to do it exactly the way that you see here. So uh, children are a different shape and that's why you don't see um, adult ones being done exactly like this. Okay, so let's uh, continue and I'm almost at this place marker. Okay, it's the first corner or the first bend. So I'm going to do that one and then I'm going to chain five. One, two, three, four and five and then I'm just gonna go for the other place marker and see how it kinda just naturally folds in front and I'm going to half double crochet that one. And I'm gonna continue along the back to make sure it's nice and tight. And when we go to set, start the next uh, row, uh, we're going to be starting in the middle, the left side of this chain that you're seeing here. When you go to fold over these chains, make sure that you are folding it in the right direction. Don't, this one for example, when you go to do it, don't do it like this um, because then you'll end up with, an, uh, with the wrong shape. You gotta make sure that it's, look, look at it and see where it's folding so that you get the right shape at the end and so that it's folded in the same spot. Okay, so continue to do that. So just uh, can just half double crochet across the place marker, um, chain five, fold it over and then half double crochet in the other place marker and then go to the end and I'll meet you at that point and we're gonna be fastening off with this color as well. So I'm now all the way up the other side and we're gonna be fastening off in a sec. So here's what it looks like. You have your two chains. You can see that the armholes are now in. So when you go to fold it over, let me take out the hook here 
and when you go to fold it over this is what it will look like. So you can see that the the sleeves are now ready to go and we're not gonna play with those sleeves right at this time. We're gonna continue the rest of the body but the interesting thing about this is and why I love sweaters is that once you fold this all of the stitch work that you had to do over the sleeves is now done for the rest of the body. So it makes the body really quick and easy to to be able to uh, follow along. So we want to be able to fasten off this color at this time and we're gonna start with something new. So I'm just trimming it and I'm pulling my yarn through. Now you're gonna wanna do a nice job. You got a child wearing this thing so you wanna make sure that you use a darning needle and really hide in your ends and this is how I do it. If you have a different way that's up to you. And I insert my needle into it into the or the yarn into the needle and I make sure that I go underneath some fibers for a little bit about an inch or so not too much. Go underneath in one direction and the secret is to do three different directions. So you got one and then you're gonna go back into a different part of the fiber area for two and don't yank on it like you want it to be sitting in there kind of nicely floating and then you wanna go back for a third time. Your project can never stretch in three directions at one time so this will never come out on you. Even in the wash it's nice and great for you. So you wanna remember this is where you finished. And now we're gonna move up and we're gonna start doing some fun work. We're gonna then move into, oh yeah we gotta place some stitch markers. So let's take out these stitch markers that are in and it's asking you to locate the front side. So the front side is what I'm gonna look at here and apparently it makes a difference. So I haven't got that far in the pattern to know for sure. So what, what it wants you to do is in the second half double crochet in the last row it wants you to place a stitch marker in the front side. So just come on the front only. So okay so don't go all the way through the work and just place a stitch marker in. And this will allow you to know which is the front side. It matters on this because I think of the puff stitches. Come to the other side also identify the second half double crochet and come in and just place a stitch marker on that side as well. It says to pin into position but you see the way I'm doing it it's not gonna fall out ever. So you just I'm just doing it nice and loose and so now I've got those two identified and I'm not sure why it's asking you that but I'm sure we'll figure that out in just a moment. So let's begin the next part of this and we're gonna start the body next. So now we're going to start and we fastened off because we're gonna start another color. So we're going to just look at the project and we're going to look toward the left side. So just turn it so it's upside down. Okay so it's away from you. So you, this is the neck. Here is the arm holes. What I want you to do is that I want you to move this side. See the hand shaking right there. And I want you to go to the sleeve area and we are going to use our secondary color which is color A. In my case it's more of a lighter blue and I'm going to create a slip knot and I'm going to join it to the middle um, chain of the five. So just looking for the middle one. Just going in. Just attach it. Okay and then chain one. And what this is doing is that it's allowing you to um, have the, the slip stitching in this because we're now gonna convert this whole thing to circles to a complete round. So we don't want the slip stitching to be on the front side here. We want it to be underneath the sleeve. So in every um, stitch going around just single crochet and what I want you to do is I want you to continue to, to do this all the way around but you're going to end up running out here and I'm gonna show you what to do. So just continue to single crochet to that spot and then I'll just uh, carry on from the video from that point and I'll show you what you need to do. Just a friendly reminder when you get to the other sleeve you're gonna have your chain. Make sure that you are um, uh, single crocheting into each one of the chains. So don't go into a gap space. Go right into the chain and then that will stabilize the stitching. And so I'll meet you then at the end where we're gonna run out and I'll show you what to do here because we need to make this into a round circle. So I'm coming up all the way around and I'm gonna run out but I need to continue to go across the front but I can't do that because I have a gap space. So what we want to do is that we've marked which one is the second one uh, half double crochet and we've done that for both sides. Okay. So what we need to do is that the very last half double crochet so let me do this one and I got one more to go. The very last one I want to stick it into that very last stitch 
but I also wanna grab then the next one and go into the very first half double crochet stitch and I wanna put them so that they're together and treat them like they're together and that locks that so that makes this into a round circle. Then we jump to the second one over and continue to single crochet all the way back to the arm that we had started with. This will then make this completely round and so the whole body is then made up of circles or like one big circle going all the way around and it makes it pretty easy to follow at this point as well. Okay, so you, you can see you've done a nice join. So I like that join actually uh, to be honest with you. Um, it doesn't have any gapping um, like I've seen in other sweaters. So that's a pretty good design as far as I'm concerned. So we're gonna keep going and I started at the middle of the next arm sleeve chain and that's where I'm going to finish off. We're not going to change these colors at this point. We're gonna keep on the color that we're currently using and then we're gonna change then because this is when it gets really nice and fancy and this is when everybody starts to love your, your finished project especially at the baby showers and etc. When you get all the way to the end it want, you want to do a join to the first single crochet. So go into the first one and do a slip stitch through and through and then that completes that round. So at this one, at this particular point you have a complete round on the underside just like this. So let's carry on and keep going. Okay, we're going to begin and we're going to do a puff stitch and a beginning puff stitch because it's different from a regular puff stitch. So in the beginning we have to get ourselves to the right height in order to do it so that that's why there's a difference. So a beginning puff stitch is you chain two first and then you come to the very next stitch, yarn over going in, pull through and hold that on your hook. Okay, let's do that again. So yarn over, same stitch, pull through and you have a total of five loops on your hook. Okay, so four are right here. This is the fifth. So you're gonna yarn over and pull through the first four only and then yarn over and pull through the final two. That is a beginning puff. Now what separates the puff is that you're going to chain one and you're going to skip one. So here is a regular puff. We're gonna yarn over and go into the next stitch. So we skip one going into the next, pull through. Yarn over, going through, Pull, then pull through again, yarn over, going in, pull through. And you will have a total, I know it's a clumpy looking right at this point, but there's a total of six loops here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yarn over, pull through all the first six so that you end up with just two left on the hook. Yarn over and pull through the final two. I'll show that again. So pull through, so chain one, skip the next stitch and you want to do another puff. So going in, pull through, yarn over, going in, pull through and yarn over, in, pull through. So a total of six loops are here plus this one. So we're gonna pull through all six first and then pull through the final two and then chain one. I'll show that one more time. So skip the next stitch, going in, pull through, going in, pull through, going in, pull through, you now have six, yarn over, pull through the first six. Whoops, let me try that again. So in, in, you have to get your tension with these kind of stitches. We've done this before in other projects. So pull through all the first six and then yarn over and pull through the final two. Chain one and then begin the next one. So do that all the way around until you get back to the start. When you get all the way back around this is where you're gonna do a correction. So if you're like missing a stitch or you are just not ending up in the right spot this is the most critical part to be able to get your um, your project to line properly. So if you need to add an extra stitch or you need to subtract a stitch this is where you're going to do it and uh, it really will not be noticeable but it's important that you get it right right now because the rest of this is all gonna fall in line with each other as you go all the way around. So we're going to just, I'm just going to do the final and I wanna make sure that I'm going to and just finish it off right. Whoops. Let me try that again. I haven't, uh, I have to be quite transparent with you all is that I haven't got my tension completely right with this uh, <laughs> buff stitching yet. So I'm, I'm a little struggling but um, I'm just trying to keep myself transparent with you that um, I'm still working on it. So 
just a matter of I'm a loose crocheter and sometimes it gets kind of tight. So I'm just going to finish off and then I'm just going to join to the top of the next puff and I'm going to finish this off. Okay? So let me uh, just trim this yarn and I've already shown you how to fasten off in this tutorial. So you can either um, just follow that, that instruction along and uh, we're gonna start the next color right at the same spot. So let's begin to do that next. So we're going to start the accent color and this is, watch how this is done. This is uh, actually take number three for me because I've been screwing up. <laughs> so I wanna come to the top of the beginning as single crochet or sorry, top of the beginning puff and I wanna attach my yarn. And I'm gonna pull through and through with the slip knot or slip stitch. I'm going to chain one first and then I'm gonna single crochet into the same one. So this is really critical on how you do this. So the next stitch is going to be down here. So we're gonna come back to two, two rounds below and what I was doing by accident, I just realized um, this is why it's take number three because I, I screwed up something else and whatever. So we wanna come down here but when we go to do this one here, we wanna grab our yarn and we're gonna double crochet but we're gonna keep this yarn on top. So don't go like this. Don't come in the front, okay? What you wanna do is you wanna go straight back. So straight back in and grab the yarn from the other side. So this makes this yarn go up over top and you wanna double crochet. Okay? So then we're gonna come into the top of the next puff as normal for a single crochet and so we're gonna come to this next one over here. So just come wrapping it, going straight back, have this yarn come up over top so coming from behind and double crochet. This is causing the double crochet to wrap around this chain one as per the instructions. Okay, so let me show you again. So wrap, going straight back, okay, and just grab the yarn from the back side and do it. Okay, so what I was doing before is that I was coming in from, I was forcing it out of the way. So let's come into the next top puff. So I'll show you what I was doing wrong. So I was going in, I was coming and I was making this pop backwards like this. So therefore it's not wrapping around the chain so you don't end up with the look on both sides. Okay? So just watch that and please do that for all this uh, entire revolution and I'll see you back here in just a moment. I'm coming up all the way back around and I wanna maintain the pattern just like you see it. Okay, so we started off with a single crochet. That means that there should be a double crochet that is left um, as your final stitch as you come all the way around. Okay, so this is the top of the, the last puff stitch before the we end. And we're gonna keep this color on for one more revolution. So let's uh, come into the very last one down here. Just to keep it consistent and then we're just gonna join it to the top of the first single crochet. So we're gonna move up to the next round. Okay, so the next round is simply uh, just chain two and we're gonna do a half double crochet into each stitch going all the way around and we're going to join it and we're going to finish this color off at this point or at that point and we're going to um, just make it quite easily um, just continue along with this pattern. So we got a little more fun work to do and you can see that the texture is really coming along nicely. It's all about colors and etc. with this particular project. So just half double crochet all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way around. It was just a simple half double crochet. I'm gonna fasten this color off once I get to the final one here. Just do, 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 do. Final one is in and I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain to fasten this off and I wanna join with my main color again which is the darker navy blue. So we're going to do that. So we're going to continue along with the pattern. You'll notice that uh, we still have quite a few more rounds to do uh, before the repeat pattern starts and the repeat pattern is based on the size of the sweater for the length but we have, to, we have a little bit, well we have a, quite a way to go. <laughs> okay so I've got that in and let's bring the main color back into pl uh, play at this point and let's see where we are here. and I want to join it to where we stopped. So for this round, round number five, we're going to do exactly what we did in round number two which is the puff stitching once again which you saw here in the blue. So we're going to just join it to where we, right where we did and 
and remember it's a beginning puff to begin. So remember the puffing. Here we go. So it's gonna be chaining two, one and two and in the next stitch we are going to do a beginning. So we're gonna wrap going in, pull through, wrap going in, pull through so that there's four on there now. You can't really see it because it's darker and just pull through all four and then pull through the final two, chain one, skip another stitch and then come into the very next one and do a regular puff. So it's going in three times. So you have six loops, pull through all six and then yarn over and pull through the final two, chain one, skip the next stitch right there, go to the next one over here and do it again. So just wrapping twice or sorry, uh, do it three times, pull through all six and then yarn over and pull through the final two, chain one and keep on going. So please do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I'm just gonna join it to the top of the first puff stitch just that we started. So we're going to switch our color back to the light a popsicle kind of color. Uh, I'm not sure, I don't remember the name of it. It's a lighter, lighter blue. We're, we're just watching the color transition. So you'll see in that there's gonna be repeats of what we're doing but it's giving you a color combination and that's why there's more um, lines in this pattern than what you think there could be. So let's uh, begin. We're going to start off with the next one and in the next one it says for round six and seven we're gonna repeat the lines three and four and because of that um, it's just really quite easy. So three and four if you remember is doing this dropping down and then the next one is a half double crochet. So if you can remember that it's pretty easy. Let's start off with the first one. We're going to join it to the top of the beginning um, puff stitch. Just join it, down, join it. Okay, chain one and single crochet into that same one. So remember what we did for that one to get that drop down look. We're just gonna wrap the hook and come to the one that you skipped over down here and just double crochet as normal and then the top of the next puff is just a single crochet. Okay, so the next one is a double crochet down so come back down here, just go around that chain one. So you can see that it's really doing some really fabulous um, textures and uh, striping at this effect as well. So let's come down to the next one and continue to do that all the way around and then in the next round that we'll do after this was so just a regular half double crochet all the way around as well. So let's uh, continue to do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay, once you come all the way back around just join with the uh, first single crochet and the next round we're going to keep the same color once again and do exactly what we did with the neon here. Chain two and then one half double crochet into each of the stitches going all the way around and then that will finish off rounds uh, round number seven. Okay, so we still have a few more rounds to go and I'm starting to understand this pattern is that the designer really wants us to mix it around these colors. I love how this is kind of popping out here. I think it's uh, kind of neat. I've never done anything like this. I'm actually really quite thrilled now. Um, it was really quite exciting about that. So um, I just skipped a stitch by accident in my excitement here. So um, just continue to half double crochet all the way around and then fasten off and then we'll start uh, rounds number eight. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I've just done my half double crochet. I'm going to join it to the top of the beginning chain two and then fasten off this. So we're gonna move on to round number eight and round number eight says with B uh, for the color. So B is the neon color for me and it's pretty cool. So let me just uh, fasten this in this yarn. So we're gonna bring the neon back in. So I'm really really, uh, so the pattern basically is as a repeat of just these stitches that you see. The only difference that you're seeing in that there's a reason for a lot of lines is that because the designer wants you to play with the colors. So we're gonna bring the neon back and right where we left off we're going to do a beginning uh, puff stitch. So in like so chain two so that was one and two and coming into the stitch you just wanna do a puff. So it's a beginning puff so there should be only four on here and then pull through the final two, chain one, skip the next stitch, go to the next over and puff 
and remember you have to do it three times. So you end up with six on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all six first and then yarn over and pull through the final two. And then chain one. Continue to do that all the way around and then you're gonna fasten this color off so it only appears this round for this time around. Okay, coming up all the way back around, I gotta make sure I chain my one and then just join it to the beginning puff stitch that we did and I wanna fasten off this color and bring on the main color for rounds nine and ten. Nine and ten are identical to what you already know and let me just point that out in a second. Let me just weave in my ends here and by weaving them in you can really hide them really good. So nine and ten is a repeat of already what you know. So this blue that you see the drop down and this bl the blue here is nine and ten. So let's uh, bring up our main color again. That's going back to the navy and I'm going to start off with in the top of the beginning. Just join it. Chain one. So now I got the pattern under my, in my brain so it's actually really quite easy. So then I come to the next, uh, I wanna single crochet in the top uh, first one and then I wanna jump down and do the double crochet again over top of everything. Single crochet on the top of the next puff and then come back down to the next one, to the next empty one. So continue to do that for rounds number nine and then you're going, we're gonna meet back up and we're gotta do a half double crochet round using the same color and then we're gonna then go to round um, 11 after that and 11 is the, the final round uh, before the pattern starts to repeat itself and the only difference why it's been so long for the the transition is that the designer has wanted you to change the colors. You notice that it's not just like um, the same colors over and over and over um, as far as being in order. So she's made it so that it's, you see a drop down of blue, drop down of neon. This time it is a drop down of navy. So she's written it in a way that um, it really showcases the colors beautifully and it makes it look amazing. So continue this round and I'll meet you back up. We'll do a half double crochet round and then move around to number 11 and then we'll start the repeat pattern at that point. And of course when you get all the way back around, join it to the top of the beginning single crochet and let's start round number 10 and it's simply just chain two and then one half double crochet into each of the stitches going all the way around. So please do that and we're gonna be finishing up this color and then going to the next color for round number 11 before the pattern starts to repeat itself. I'm coming up all the way back around and I'm just going to just join it to the top and this completes off round number, where am I here? Round number 10. So round number 11, if you notice in the instructions that it takes you right back to the very beginning again. So I just wanna quickly explain this to you because I don't need to show you this pattern color anymore because what the pattern uh, 11 is asking you to do is to repeat round rounds three all the way to 11 again. But here's the thing. So this puff stitching here that you did with this light blue, you're going to start and do that next. Okay, so you can just look at where you are in this project and repeat it. Now if you're doing the six month size that I am, what you have to do is you have to look at the pattern and determine what the, the distance is. So it says to repeat the pattern until you get to the size that you need. So I need six and a half inches from the bottom of the arm all the way to the bottom of the sweater over here. So I'm gonna continue to repeat this pattern until I get my six and a half inches. So that doesn't mean that I have to do all the ways from three to 11 once again. It just means that I have to continue three to 11 until I get that. Now if you're doing a bigger size such as the 24 months, it's gonna be a lot deeper. So you may actually do three to 11, one complete time, two complete times. It's up to you and you just have to look at the dimensions. So for a six month size, you need six and a half inches from the bottom of the armpit to the bottom of the sweater. For the next size up, it's uh, seven inches. The next size up is nine inches and the, and the biggest size, 24, is 10 inches. So you can see this is the repeat pattern just like so. So I'm gonna leave that with you because you know how to do this already and you can look at the colors that you've already established and be able to continue it. And when we come back, we're gonna start and do the sleeves next and then we're gonna then get into the actual um, uh, finishing te techniques which is, includes the, the neck and the arms and etc. So uh, continue that and this is where we are on this particular project right now. So I'm back and off camera I have actually repeated uh, the rows uh, three to 11 one more time and I got my six and a half inches from the bottom of the arm 
hole all the way to the bottom. Okay, so I got my six and a half. So if you're doing another size you'll have a different length there. So it looks out pretty cool actually I'm really quite happy with it. So off camera I played with the idea of doing one of the um, sleeves so I could practice. I had to do this a few times to be quite honest with you. I was screwing up on the on the end and I was getting bigger and bigger and bigger because I was adding an extra stitch. So the biggest tip I have for doing sleeves is that you do gotta watch your counts. The counts are so important because then they will not uh, balance out properly if you are off counting all the time. So we need to make sure that we're watching that and so the very first that we're going to do is going to be uh, very important. Let me explain a little bit more about the sleeve before you begin especially if you're doing other sizes than what you see here on camera. When we go to start the sleeve you're gonna notice that in the instructions it says first round and then RS, WS, RS and WS and you'll notice those are in the colors of the sizes. So what is telling you here is that in this size is that we want to start from the right side. So we're gonna start, this is the outside of the sweater I've deemed it to be. So when I go to start to crochet I wanna crochet so I'm on the, the right side. If it's the wrong side what you have to do is that you have to open it up and look for it this way Okay, so you go from the sleeve and go around this way. Okay, do you get that? So the right side would be is if I'm looking at the project and I'm going to go on the outside but if you're doing the wrong side you have to kind of look through the sleeve here and then just begin. The reason for it, it's telling you to do that is that do you see that there's lines that show up here? Well if you start and do it the wrong side you're gonna have a very obvious line here that doesn't match. So you wanna be very careful about that and that's what the wrong side, right side means for the sleeves. So let's begin. I'm going to create a slip knot and I'm using the same navy blue that I have been working all along. And I want to start in the middle of the chain five that you did before. Okay, so there's five stitches here. We're gonna start right in the middle. And because it says the right side I'm gonna be just, I'm looking at it as if the kid was wearing it and I'm just gonna pull, pull it like this and I'm gonna go to the middle one of the five. And then just join my yarn on and we're going to start. Okay, so what I wanna explain to you is that you have five stitches here and then you have the remainder all here. The goal for this particular size that we need is 26 um, going all the way up and over but we have the five right here as well. Okay, so we're gonna have to get these five down plus all 26. Now if you're doing both sleeves because the counts are so important if something is slightly wrong you still only need to get the counts that you see on, on the pattern. So for example say this side you're off by one you need to make sure that you're the same because then you'll end up, end up with a sleeve that looks different and believe in me my first ever baby scarf I ever did um, the one sleeve was slightly off. It was off by one stitch and when they look straight down it looks like they're, they're off and it makes a big difference even one stitch. So it's important. Okay, so I've just joined my yarn on and let's go for round number one and it says to chain two, one and two and it says to half double crochet into the same um, space as the slip stitch that we started with and now it's saying to do uh, one single crochet in each of the next two. So these are the next two chains that are available to you that are in the arm. Okay, so we're just gonna go one and two and this is what you need to watch out for the most in this next part. So we have to just watch where we're joining things because right now you have a line that is blue okay because we did that as per the pattern but the turning to go up is one up. Okay, so if you start down here you're gonna end up with extra stitches so your first stitch is actually right on the, the top here. Okay, because that one, this one here is already in there. And all we're just going to do is that e each one of these around is going to be one half double crochet into each one of these stitches going all the, all the way over top of the shoulder. So we have one, so let's just count this, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine,
13, 14, 15, 16. Keep turning that. 16. Um, we got 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, Okay, and there should only be two stitches left on this going around. So 25 and 26. So we got my 26 in. And so we're gonna come back to where the chain of five is on the other side. And there's only two there left and it's just one single crochet in each of the final two. Okay, so that is your completion of round one for this size. And we want to join this with a slip stitch. So I had several mistakes when I first did my sleeve because this is where I made my mistake. So what we want to do is move up to round number two and let me show you what to do with that. So where I made my mistake is that I kept going. So when I chained up, so I'm gonna chain two. So sorry, I'm gonna turn first. So I'm gonna turn the project first and we're gonna come back in the direction that we just came. So we came from this way so we're gonna go back and we're going to chain two first, one and two. And this is where we're going to half double crochet. So we're, we've already half double, our chain two is this one. So our first one is over here, right where I'm pinching. And that's my first one. And I'm just going to half double crochet myself all the way around this sleeve. That's all this is. So for this round we're just gonna do one half double crochet into each and I'm gonna show you where to finish off because I was getting it to the point where I kept growing by one stitch because I was adding an extra stitch and I'll show you that secret when I get around. I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way back around and the trick to this particular sleeve is knowing when you're done. It's like anything when it comes to the half double crochet. So what I wanna do is that I wanna look at the project and I wanna see where the chain two is that I started with. Okay, and it's over here. So I'm gonna keep half double crocheting until I get there. Okay, so I'm looking at it. So this is my chain two that we started with right there. Okay, so here's my chain two. So how many stitches do you think I have left? I have one and two. It appears to be three but it's not. The chain two is part of that stitch where it's stretching over and that's where I was making my mistake by adding one stitch. If you don't believe me, just count your stitches and you'll notice that is true. So it appears that I'm stopping one early, this one, but this is part of that. So I'm just going to go to the top of the chain two. Make sure you go into the chain. Do not go into the space or you'll end up with a hole right underneath of the child's um, arm if you do that. So you go right into an actual um, chain and then through and through. So this is row number two. So for the next three rows or rounds that we wanna do, we wanna turn our work each time and we wanna do the exact same th thing. So we're gonna chain two and then half double crochet. So when we go to start the half double crochet, make sure you start one over. Okay, don't start right underneath there and just half double crochet around and then turn. So for the next three rounds, which I'm gonna have you do uh, and I'm gonna do that off camera, just uh, do the exact same thing, one half double crochet into each and turn each and every time. So just make a note of that and just do it. So I've come up all the way around and I've done my three extra rows that I talked about and I'm ready to go. So at this point, if this is looking like it's getting bigger, Okay, see how it looks like a can of soup is just going straight up on both sides. If this was looking like it's going in, you know it's wrong and if it's getting bigger, then you know it's wrong. So make sure that you keep your counts, it's so important. Let's turn our work and move up to row number, what are we, where are we here? We're on the next round. Okay, so we're now going to decrease and start a taper. So let's begin to do that next. So we're gonna chain two to begin. So the first two stitches that you have are gonna be two together with a half double crochet. So just wrap the hook, go into the first stitch, pull through, wrap the hook again, going into the next stitch, pull through. Okay, so you have a total of five loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all five and you've just now made two stitches into one. For the remainder of this uh, round, you want to make sure that you're going to just half double crochet and the final two stitches that you do in this uh, round need to be um, together as well. Half double crochet, two together. So I'll leave that with you and I'll see you back here in just a moment. I'll show you how to do that side of it. So we're going to be tapering on the inside of the sleeve. 
I'm coming up to the end of that row, row there. And so I'm looking for my final. So here's my final. This one doesn't count. So these two stitches that I have, okay, are the two together. So wrap the hook going in, pull through. Wrap the hook going into the very next stitch, pull through. You got your five loops, yarn over and pull through all five. And you're going to slip stitch to the top of the chain two that you started with. And that completes off that one. So now what we're gonna look back in the instructions that we have here and it says the next uh, four for the our particular size is going to be chain two one half double crochet. So it's already what you know for what we've already done. So for the next four revel uh, times we're going to go that. So we're gonna chain two, turn our work. There's a lot of turning of this one because it's not a very big um, project for space wise. Okay, so we're just going to chain two and then half double crochet all the way back and then slip stitch, turn and keep and half chain two and half double crochet. So please do this for four more times um, that you have and for this particular size. It's it's other sizes. There's other sizes there. You wanna look at the instructions for what that one is. And I'm gonna get that done off camera and then we're gonna taper it once again and I'll show you what to do next. So I have another four done as per the instructions and I'm gonna do the final taper. Okay, so this is what it looks like. You should be able to hold up your sleeves on both sides and actually determine, make sure that you are right as far as sizing at this point and if you're not then don't continue. Just find out where you've gone wrong and just uh, frog and get it to be right again if you're off. So um, if you are continuing along. So we're going to chain up two and this time we're gonna taper one more time. So the next two are together for half double crochet and you'll notice that the sleeve has been getting smaller and smaller and then we're gonna half double crochet all the way back around but this time the last um, two are going to be two together again and this will be the final time. You're going to need a tape measure after this point um, because the sleeve has to be a certain distance from the bottom of the armhole for the certain size that you're working with and they're all different dimensions for all the different sizes. So in my case I believe it was six and a half inches. Yes it was. So I'm continuing around. I'm getting, I'm getting, been getting faster and faster at this A because I'm getting used to the pattern but B um, because there's less stitches also because we have been tapering a little bit since the very beginning. You notice that the slip stitching should be on the underside of the sleeve as well. So when the child is wearing it you should not physically see where the slip stitching is. So I'm coming up all the way around and I notice that is part of there. And so I have one more to go. And the next to final two are the last two and they're gonna be two together. And then once you have that done just join it to the top of the chain two. So for the remainder of the sleeve you need to just continue as normal. So just chain up two. So turn your work, chain up two and then just continue around and then every time you turn just go. You're going to need a tape measure and just measure from the bottom of the armpit or the armhole and just go a six and a half inches. Okay. So what I'm going to do with myself is that um, I don't know how many chains that I did or how many revolutions I did but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it over and I'm going to use that as my measurement and I'm going to look at the stitch work as well to make sure that it, it is in balance as well at that point too. So just continue to do that until you get to the length that you need and then we're gonna start then doing some final touches around uh, the neck. So we now have most of the project complete. We're now gonna do the final edging of the neck and the front panel here. There's buttons on the front. There's no other um, trimming that needs to be done with this uh, baby sweater. So what you're gonna notice, look at the photo of the baby and you'll notice how the buttons are coming over and that the buttons are coming through the loops on this side and then essentially the flat side that we're going to attach the buttons will be over here. So let's uh, begin and we're going to do this side first and we're going to start off at the top of the neck and work our way down and it's 17 uh, single crochets all the way down if you're doing the six months and there's other sizes available if you if you've done the other sizes. So let's start off and just start off in the front corner. You can choose a color that is in here. I'm thinking of blue. It's been speaking to me the whole time. I'm gonna try it with the light blue and see how it goes. So using a slip knot put it onto your hook and go right into the corner of the neckline. Okay so don't not down here but up here and coming in coming in. Just going in, just 
just wrap and fasten on your yarn like so and we're going to chain one to begin. Okay and leave the straggler down on top of it so you can trap it in a position. So you're gonna work your way down and just um, single crochet evenly. So we have to get a total of 17. Let's see if we can do it. So we got one and two, three and I'm kinda looking where it's gonna go. Four, five, I'm going into a chain area, not a gap. Six, seven, and eight. And I need a total of 17. So I'm looking at it, I'm at the eight spot. I'm almost at the halfway spot. So I should be halfway down. Okay, this is gonna be nine. See how that doesn't look the same? I'm gonna try nine again. I'm gonna get into more of the stitch work. I only grab one strand. It's really important that you try to keep it as consistent as possible. So that was nine, ten, ten, ten. This is going to be, I'm grabbing more strands than I should. This is eleven, twelve, thirteen, That was 13. It's not always easy to film in front of the camera. Okay, this is 14. I'm almost down to the bottom so I'm gonna jam in some extra stitches down there. This will be 15 if I can just get it through. 15, 16, and 17 is right at the bottom. Okay, so let me just uh, review the instructions. I think we have to turn our work. So we don't go up on the other side as far as I know. So we're just going to um, turn. So we're gonna turn and come back up the other side. So we're gonna chain one first. And then it says to do, um, what does it say? One single crochet in each and then fasten off at the top. So we're just gonna work our way back to the top. And the buttons are going to be sewn to this particular side. So the difference of the other panel is that we're going to provide button loops so you can fasten on your buttons. But in this side we're not going to. So single crochet back up. And then you're gonna wanna use a darning needle to weave in your final edge at the top. And we still have to do a neckline after we get the other side done as well. So don't forget we still have to do that. So come all the way back to the top. Okay, and fasten off. Okay, there's my straggler that I kind of buried. Again, I'm just gonna fasten that off using my darning needle just like I've shown you in the beginning of this tutorial on how I fasten off. So it's a very quick and easy process. A child will be wearing this so you wanna make sure you're taking your extra time of, of hiding in these loose ends because if you have to wash any of this stuff, um, which is this yarn is, is okay to wash, um, you're gonna want it so it's not falling out on you. So if you go in three different directions, so one, this is number two, and back in the third direction, just go into a different area of the fibers. The project can never stretch three different ways at one time, so it will never come out on you. And just trim it right down. Okay, so that is the first side done. So you'll notice it's sticking out a little bit more because this will be tucked up underneath and then the other side will be coming on the top here. So let's uh, do the other side next. So let's start the other side. So we're gonna start in a different spot than we did last time. So last time we started at the top here. This time we're gonna start up down here. The reason for that is that we came and we went down this way. In order to keep the stitch looking consistent you have to start here. It's just like you would have just maybe come around and come back up. So that's why we're starting at the base of the neck. Okay let's uh, get our yarn ready. And this side is also the same. You want to evenly space 17. So starting at the base in let's attach our yarn. Okay, chain one 
and let's put in for this particular size it's, uh, 17 single crochets working yourself up. Okay, so it's, this is three because the first one counted as one. So this will be three. You wanna do a nice job. This side is gonna be visible. Okay, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And what I can tell already, I have 17 to do and I'm almost at the top. So I'm going to pull out. So off camera, I'm gonna restart this again and try to get my 17 more equally balanced. Okay, so I'll expect you to do that and I'll see you at the end of this line. Okay, so when I last left you, I told you to get your 17 in, which I did and now I'm gonna turn. So this time it's gonna be slightly different. We're gonna create the buttonholes as we go back. So it says, let's just read the instructions uh, and just go as slowly. So we're gonna chain one in one single crochet in the first single crochet. And then it says to do um, chain three. So this is the first buttonhole obviously. So one, two and three. Skip the next two single crochets and then one single crochet in each of the next four for the size. There's different sizes there. So next four. So one, two, three and four. So then you're gonna chain three again. So one, two, three. And then skip the next two stitches, go into the third for another four. So one, two, two, three, and four. Okay, chain three again. This is the final button. There's three. So one, two, and three. Skip two stitches and just go into the final, the last two single crochets. Fasten off and then we are going to jump to the neck next and then we're gonna do some button work. Okay, let's begin to do the neck area and the neck we're going to use the same color. So remember colors are just subjective to you. So right where we finished the last one with the buttonholes, I want you to come right to the top and there are stitches now that you can follow all the way around. So coming into the top, um, slipped on the right corner of the foundation chain. So you're gonna come right to the top to where the blue is and join and then chain one. Leave that straggler down on top of the line and I want you to continue, to, we're gonna single crochet in that one and then I want you to continue all the way around the neck. Just follow the stitches that you can see. They're all there. Okay, so you don't have to worry about counting too much and just one single crochet into each going all the way until you get to the other side over here and then I'll meet you there and I'll show you how to do a reverse single crochet and other than the buttons that would be the end of the crochet element for this particular sweater for today. So I'm coming up all the way around and I'm gonna go to the top of the other side of the of this blue here to make it look complete. Now it doesn't say to fasten off, it just says to do a reverse single crochet going back in the direction that we came from. Um, I'm just for creative reasons, I'm going to change my color. I'm going to make the final edge, the final round, the, the neon blue that I've been working with. Again, the creativity is up to you. So when I get to the end, you're going to either just wait for me or you're gonna fasten off like I'm going to. So I just think it'd be kinda cool to have an accent color and bring that knee onto the top of the neck. Kinda brings it better balance in my opinion. But um, again, this is your own creativity. I'm going to just leave this out of the way and I'm gonna use a downy needle. So we're not going to turn our work but I'm going to be bringing on our next color. I wanna leave an extra long tail this time because I don't want it to be too obvious that um, for the where I'm starting. So I'm going to insert in and just leave this tail out of the way coming in. Okay, so we're gonna chain one first and then we're coming into the next chain or sorry to the next stitch. So you just come next, so you come backward. This is a reverse single crochet. Grab the yarn, pull it under and then grab the yarn and pull through. Okay, so come to the next stitch. So you're going backwards, come under, and pull through. This creates like a roping kind of look on the top. 
and because I know that already because I've played with this stitch several times is that I think it'd be kind of cooler with an accent color. So this is called the reverse single crochet. So you're, oops, so you're going to reverse all the way back to the very beginning, fasten off and then the crochet element is done. You really do wanna watch your strands for this so if you're dropping any of the strands that you see um, it will be visible. So just take your time, get it done. This is gonna be very um, obvious uh, because it is an accent color and it's up right by the baby's face so you do wanna take your time with doing the reverse single crochet. So I'll get that done and then we'll meet back up and get the buttons completed at that time. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I'm just reverse single crocheting. So I'm stopping at the top of the of the foundation chain that we started off with. I didn't refer to it as the foundation chain but just look for the blue and just follow it straight up and then that's where you're going to finish. So I really wanna take my time into weaving these ends in beautifully. The, the um, this edging looks absolutely spectacular but you gotta really take care of those loose ends and make sure they're well hidden. So we're just going to trim the yarn and grab your darning needle and just uh, put the needle so that it's in behind the neck and I'm gonna do that for both sides. And let's start doing the button work. This is what it looks like so far. <laughs> That's neat. So let's uh, begin to do the next part and it's just button work. So let's uh, begin to review the buttons. So what you have to just do is just lay this over top and you want it secured inside of this area here. So the very first thing you need to do is you need to find buttons that can go through that chain three space. You don't want it so to, to the point where you really have to force it through and so that will go through. So what I wanna do is I wanna lay it down on top and just kinda eye it up to exactly where I need to do and then I'm gonna sew it to the other side like this. And so therefore when I go to have the baby use it then the baby I can get it through and the baby then will be secured within the buttons. So just grab a darning needle and some thread and just uh, sew it down into this section here and then your sweater is good to go and good for a great gift. <laughs> 